No, we should be playing Home for the Holidays as our lead-in for the last <clears throat> day we show before Christmas. But it's Go too ahead late. and sing it. Uh, do you know the tunes? No. You've got a good voice. Bill. Yeah, but I, I don't know the tune. I don't know the lyrics. Mm. Good. Besides, if I started singing, then we'd have to pay a royalty to whoever the. Uh, I think they're past the that one. Do you think? I don't think so. You don't think so? Mm. You think we could sing "Good King Wenceslas" or something like that without paying royalties? Yes. Silent Night. I, all I those, do believe you. All could. those old favorites. I do believe you could get away with that. <laughs> I believe the FCC is not listening to the show. Really? Oh, I. I would be it surprised be. if, yeah, could be. who wouldn't listen to this show? Are you kidding me? And, and I hear your uh, listenership goes up by leaps and bounds on the 930 show Quantum on Mondays. Leaps. Quantum <laughs> leaps. That, that, an exponential increase, I'm <laughs> Exponential. Yes. So uh, there are how many days before Christmas? Um, Three. Three days. Three yeah, days. Today's 20 seconds. Jackie knows because we have the days before Christmas in the windows of the earthy farty. Other than that, she's just plain old smart. Mm -hmm. But hey, the artsy fartsy's open today. Now, how long is it open? Through 7 p.m. on Christmas Eve. Christmas Eve, oh. Wednesday. Wow. So when I start my shopping about noon, Christmas Eve, right? You it can will come still in, be open. It will be open till seven, and we'll even wrap. You'll wrap too. What you buy? That's at good. The artsy -fartsy. She sits and wraps. You, you're thinking like. Christmas wrapping for gifts? No, no. She's talking about wrapping. Wrapping. Yeah, yeah she is. But Christmas the artist wrap, thought does. since there's only three days to Christmas that we would be open today, which is, we haven't been open on Monday. So those of you who don't think we're open, we're open. You're 11 open. to 7. Open today. 11 to 7. Artsy fartsy. Fartsy artsy. I was listening to that ad. That's such, you know, I love Karina. <laughs> it's a great ad. You did a good job. Good. She does a, a, a real good job. Okay. Hi. Hi. Yeah, I'm so I was telling uh, Greg that because I never hear your voice on the radio, but you have a nice radio voice too. Really? Yeah. When yeah. did you hear my voice? Just now. Just oh. now. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. You and Jackie were both on the end with Karina. I, I have never heard you on the radio. Well, you can listen. Good. You can listen to it by going to think thinkingrealestate.com, we have all of these, or most of the radio shows online. Yeah, I know that. But and I you can even watch why, us. Okay. You all can right, make well, sure your hair looks nice. Why? Of course, it would be too what late. What do I care? Well, the it's a radio Paul show. Paul in England can see how you look. Uh, He's our steady follower, our English friends. Oh, uh -huh. good. You got a long, you've got a wide viewership, or listenership. And he, viewership. He, he's from Yorkshire. One of the best expressions he ever he ever said to me was that you know the, the people from you know, the men from Yorkshire they have deep pockets and short arms. <laughs> have you ever heard that one before? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> I think I'm you. Yeah, did I say that once before? <laughs> you know that's that's the beauty of getting older. I don't necessarily remember well, everything, so I probably you say can't remember everything. Then. Yeah. All right. What are we talking about today? Well, well you know, so the new year is starting, and I bet people are planning what they're going to do in the spring. So let's talk about construction. and. Well, and you and I talked about it. We said yesterday we are going to talk about that today, and oddly enough, I saw a couple this morning that they're doing exactly that, the uh, owner and a prospect of contractor. And uh, so it's a very, very uh, uh, timely. topical and timely, timely. subject. Yeah. Well, I think there's you just there's just a buzz around. Well, no, it's anybody. Anybody that goes out and hires a roofing contractor, hires a foundation contractor, no, I know, doing but people, et cetera. People are a mean? little more fluent with money, and except for fluid. I could, you know, the, the, people should watch the video no, and watch yeah, those. Yeah, okay. <laughs> they, they have a little more money to spend. They're more affluent is what you're saying, Well, right? that wasn't what I wanted to say, but go ahead. Okay. They have um, more money? They yes. have more money. They have more money to, to spend on a variety of things, one of which is home improvement. Right. Okay. Or building a new house. And so what you and I and talk about. And if you're going to put your house on the market and it needs a new roof, for example, I'd say at this moment in time, you probably do the roof. Well, it's, I, I, just in this market, people don't have the extra money to do it. And well, wait a second, you just said people have extra money. <laughs> Probably should turn that off during the radio show. I forgot to mute. <laughs> it's Laura's radio. Oh, oh, Laura's oh, I, I, I put a new uh, ringtone for a text message, the Minions. Okay. So anyway, 
Uh, yeah, well, no, but no, people buying don't have the I, I extra. Can't no, like words, you had. Seriously. <laughs> you had said they. I just said they had extra money, but when they're buying a house, they've got to typically put stuff into the house, do furniture. I mean, they just don't have eight thousand dollars to drop into a roof. Right. No, I understand. I'm, but I'm. You're, you're raising a different issue whether the seller should go ahead and, and make certain repairs, et cetera, before putting the property on the market. You got to sit and, and think rationally about that, whether or not that makes sense, or whether, as part of the negotiation for the purchase price, there's a knockoff or a credit to the purchaser for some amount. Right. Yeah, so I, I, and what I I'm want, saying is, typically, a buyer doesn't have that money to come back and put a roof on. Right, I just don't want to confuse the two subjects. Oh, all right. right. Because the, the subject that you and I discussed yesterday that you wanted to talk about today was what it is that someone who is looking to do home improvement or construction of any kind, what they should be doing. And it's it's timely because, I mean, as I say, I ran into somebody this morning where the conversation is happening with a contractor, uh, and uh, I get calls constantly from clients who ask me what should I be doing, and then asking me to review the contracts uh, with respect to the contractor. And unfortunately, so how do you many verify? people don't. A uh, contractor is legitimate. Mm. Let's start with that. First order business is you, you get referrals. In other words, I would never hire a contractor unless I talked to someone for whom that contractor had done work previously. You and I, for example, we're, we're putting on, we've got to replace the porch at the cottage up north. Um, I got some okay, names. Okay, place the porch at 759 West Michigan. Okay, so anyway, the, my, my point is, I got names of, of reputable contractors in the area. I then contacted each of them, and I had a list of questions that I asked them by email, in writing, uh, sent it to them, and one of them was, I want the names of three or four of the people that you have done work for recently, contact information so I can talk to them. Any Please. reputable contractor is going to be able to give you that? Absolutely. If, if they can't run, don't uh, walk Well, the other thing them. we did was we asked for addresses of properties because we were looking at building a new house. And we were looking, so we asked for addresses so we could go see the workmanship. Right, and, but that's part of it. In other words, well, give me the. Well, coincidentally, one of them we stopped in and just knocked on the door. Although that wasn't a name they gave us as a reference. Right, but the, the point being that you're going to talk to people for whom that contractor has previously done work, ask them to be candid with you the good, the bad, the ugly. Uh, did the contractor do the work on time? That's one of the things you ask. Uh, did the contractor do what the contractor was supposed to do under the contract? Were there many change orders? Did, did the work progress as it was originally contracted? Or did you have to have change orders? Did the contractor come in within the quoted price? And so many and people... Does the contract include everything that should like landscaping? And, and are you comparing apples to apples? Absolutely. One might include landscaping, the other one might not. Clean up of the site after each day. I mean, there are some contractors that leave their, their crap everywhere, okay? And the site's a mess. That's not the contractor you want to hire. Uh, you want to ask the, the person you're talking to that, that, that's the referral or the uh, reference, uh, did they clean up the site? Were there people uh, uh, organized? Um, did they show up on time? I mean, there are many contractors that you don't see them for weeks at a time, and they just show up because they have other things going on, and you're just sort of fit in. Um, and talk to the contractor about what is your schedule. In other words, when we say, and, and you have in the contract a definite starting time. This project is going to start no later than this particular date. Completion date, okay? How long is it going to take? Project's going to take 90 days? Fine. Let's put in this project has to be done by July 31, whatever the date may be. If it's not done by that date, what's supposed to happen? One of the best things you can put into a contract is a penalty clause so that if the contractor does not get the job done when the contractor said it was going to be done, other than what's called force majeure, which is act of God, you know, something happens that the contractor's delayed that isn't the contractor's fault, you build in a penalty clause every day that goes past, not necessarily that deadline, but you might get a grace period of 30 days. But if it goes beyond that, guess what? Now the contract price goes down or you're going to pay me back some amount of money, or there's going to be a credit. I mean, there, there's a lot of stuff. And, but do you and, do things like check their builder's license? Get a copy of it. Check their builder's and license. And their liability insurance. You're, 
th this is a subject that we can't address satisfactorily in the time we have this morning. Let's just talk about some of them. You're absolutely right. I always tell people, go to the city or the township or the county, whoever is the building authority for that jurisdiction where the contractor is working, and go in and talk to the building department. They won't tell you the good, the bad, and the ugly, but you can ask for some of the projects that they've gotten permitted. Um, but I am going to check the license. It's easy to check a license of a contractor. Residential builders must be licensed under Article 24 of the Michigan Occupational Code. You go to the LARA, the Licensing and Regulatory Agency website, and you can check their license right at the website. It will also tell you if any complaints, if there have been, not complaints, if there's been any discipline uh, rendered by the uh, Lawsuits? Residential builders. Uh, lawsuits, a little more difficult to check. That you're going to have to do a credit search on them, and most people don't have access to credit information. You have to have a legitimate reason. If you have a lawyer, if, if a lawyer is representing you, the lawyer is able to do a credit check on the builder. Uh, and we have a, a service that we use called TLO, uh, and you can check on, on for legitimate credit purposes. Uh, the credit of the, the builder, find out if there are lawsuits, uh, etc. You do want to know the financial stability of the builder because a lot of owners got burned in the, the 1980s, particularly when interest rates went up. Builders were funding the next project from the last project, okay, or funding the last project from the new project so that when they got to the end of the, the string of dominoes, there wasn't any money to finish the project. Now, there's something called the Builders, uh, Builders Trust Fund Act, but uh, you want to make certain that your builders got the funds to be able to afford to finish the project. You should have a contract, have a written contract with the contract. That written contractor should provide for uh, payments uh, staged out over the course of Well, if you've got a loan work. on it, they're going to not well, let you pay the whole thing. Right. Well, anyway. if you have a mortgage, if I have a loan, if I just have a personal loan, now, right. then that's not going to care. But if I have a mortgage and the, the mortgage is paying for the construction, then the mortgage company and the title company are involved. And I'd always have the title company involved anyway if I was doing a large project where I was having payments uh, over the course of the construction. And then I would make sure that, that small, there's no lien. What if it's a small project and, uh, for example, just something simple like installation of a water heater, do you pay the the person at the finish of the installation or do you wait until you've got the inspection from the municipality? You, that one I would actually, they're probably going to request a deposit because they're going to pay for the water heater, they want the money to be able to pay for it. Depends upon the contractor, many contractors they're able to finance it, it's all taken care of, but some may want a, a, Just something at the beginning. But my point, yeah, I would wait until I actually have the uh, inspection done and it's finished. That's the final item. You don't pay 100% until that is done. And then what about if a contractor asks you if they should get permits or not? Always get permits. Yeah. Always, Would always get Would you run the other way then from that if, contractor? If a contractor permit? wants to do the work and says, hey, look, I don't need to pull a permit or we can do this without pulling a permit, you're with the wrong contractor. Because particularly with the seller's disclosure statement, you were asked on that statement whether or not any work was done for which permits were not lifted. And you have to be truthful on the seller's disclosure statement. And to the, in the instant you disclose that work was done that required a permit for which no permit was lifted or obtained, you have yourself a serious problem. You also have a, a hazard problem, too. I mean, if you have electrical work which is done by an unlicensed individual, I don't know that it's done properly. It hasn't been inspected by the... the not to mention, it probably won't be insured. It won't be covered by your insurance. It may not be covered by problem. insurance either. I mean, you have a whole host of issues. And I, uh, I, I, I'm a firm believer in making certain that where a permit is required, you hire a licensed contractor to do the work, and you make certain that the appropriate permit or permits are lifted. Yeah. Would you be worried about a, a deadline? where the contractor sees the deadline coming up and then you might get a little faulty workmanship. Yeah, you know, I always worry about that. And, and one of the best pieces of advice I can give anybody that's hiring a contractor is visit the site at least once a day. I mean, if you're building a new house, for example, don't simply sit there and not go see what's going on because once those walls are drywalled, you have no idea what's behind them. There's a rough inspection that takes place, but you want to actually see what's being done, what 
what materials are being incorporated in the structure, whether or not the work is being is acceptable, not just the code, but your standards may be higher and probably are higher than simply code. So you actually visit the site and uh, make certain the contractor's doing what the contractor's supposed to be doing. Because most people don't don't know whether the work is quality workmanship or not. I'm fortunate in that I have a general contractor that I live with. She is one of the bright, brightest, <laughs> most demanding individuals imaginable. And she's right there making certain that the contractors do what they're supposed to be doing. And if they're not doing it properly, she'll, she'll say something. Beat them up. But I have really good contractors. Well, that she, she won't beat them up. And I'll say in Ann Arbor as well, one of the best allies we had was the city inspector. This guy was <coughs> terrific. And he was not going, he, he would And he was the one that everybody hated. Because All the contractors so hated him. Just he was the toughest one. He was the Frank Donovan of of uh, Ann Arbor, and uh, I say that with love, Frank. But um, yeah, I think you want to make it clear that Frank Donovan is an excellent inspector. Right. What you're saying is he does such a good job, job that right. people who don't do good workmanship don't like somebody like Frank because he comes in and makes certain well, that they do the it, job. It properly. is what it is. The code is what it is. Well, so. but but there's also I, I will say that the the guy in Ann Arbor was very good also in pointing out, hey, look, this does meet code, but there is a better way to do this. Right. We had right. an insulation issue where <clears throat> they put foam insulation on the wall. And it wasn't done. It's, it dries or something, and you don't know how it's going to apply evenly You don't know whether it actually fills in. No, that, right. You don't know whether it's actually filled in or not. And, and he said, had, this doesn't have anything shrinks. to do with code, but i got to tell you, this is not a good job. And uh, we made the contractor come back and, and make it right. And we wouldn't have necessarily known without the, the inspector mentioning and, it. And there us. are owners who are pains in the butt, you know, who just don't know enough and they just come in and, and uh, uh, raise issues because they don't know any better, but a, a knowledgeable owner or an owner who can get somebody knowledgeable about construction, visit that site every day. Make certain that what's going into that structure is what's supposed to be there and that's good quality. Well, and if you hire good contractors like our electrician, A Plus Electric, Carl Evanson, is awesome. I use, uh, we use Jason Flick, Flick Plumbing. Uh, Matt Grimes. But there's some others too. Plumbing. I mean, yeah, don't, 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 don't are, just limit it to these right, guys. But, okay. but these I mean, guys are great. We've done a lot of work. Do. We've done a lot of work over the years. And we've gone through some good contractors right. and some not so good contractors. Right. So we do have pretty good we've idea. We've got some good HVAC people it's, that it's, we just hire. Yeah. You know, they we don't have to question them because you know they're going to do what they say they're going to do. But the other thing is any contractor that you ask questions of, if that contractor is evasive, if that contractor thinks you're a pain in the butt because you're asking questions, right. that's the wrong kind. Yeah, right. Because they should be transparent. They should be willing to talk with you, take the time to explain to you what's going on, why it's happening, etc. And not give you some sort of uh, phony baloney run around, uh, you know, sort of talk in circles about what's happening. Straightforward, it's not that complicated, be transparent. But let's talk about this subject again because there's an awful lot that we could discuss. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I think we're running out of time. All right, uh, 2511 South Primer Road, 1800 plus square feet ranch, full, um, almost full basement, and all renovated on the inside, nice house, 129.9 Western School District, fenced in backyard, acre of land, good deal. And um, got some other great houses for sale, so call me at 780-3800, come visit the Artsy Fartsy today, 11 to 7, I, I promise tomorrow you and I Wednesday, to 11 to 7, go to thinkingrealestate.com for all the listings in, on the market not just ours, but everything, and then go shout. And a shout out to Tom Hunsdorfer and his philosophy professor friend. That's it. That was the show. That's and it. all the Starbucks people, yeah. And his philosophy professor friend is a woman by the name of Lori. She's the only woman allowed at the Starbucks board of directors. Oh, table. seriously? I couldn't show up there? Seriously? Well, you would show up. I don't know that you'd be off oh, the chair. Oh, seriously? Yeah, well. Oh, I, you're walking a thin line here. You heard it first here. <laughs>